Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Today is National Umbrella Day, so I figured I would um, go ahead and do a fun little umbrella painting with you. And I apologize, I was supposed to be on at lunch today, but I ended up having to pop into the office and get some other stuff done. So we're going to tone our canvas with an orange color. This is cadmium orange. It's from Blick. It does not really matter. You could do a um, you could do a burnt sienna. This stuff is so thick. I just don't really feel like thinning it. You could do a bright orange. You could do a red. I chose the cadmium because this one, this particular brand, tends to be very transparent. And so when I place it on here, I can see through it, no problem. And I can still see my design. So really just trying to get a base color. And so you'll notice I've got this new sign here that says text me. I'm testing it out. And um, if you are interested in getting the tracer for this project, you can just go ahead and text umbrella to that phone number and I will send you the tracer when we're done going live here. And yeah, all the good stuff. Plus I will also make sure that you get notified when I'm going live and all the good stuff. So let me know. And of course, if you're watching, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. Inner circle folks, I've already posted the link to the tracer for you. One of the perks of being a blue cat inner circle insider. All right, so just getting the base color down here. For some reason, this always feels like it takes forever to get that first, first coat of paint on. But now if any kind of like color manages to peek through, it will have this wonderful orangish tin tinge. Hey Holly, thanks for joining. Holly already got on my text my text line so she got the heads up we were going live all right so i think that's good enough it's a little streaky but it doesn't really matter what we're really aiming for here is getting um getting a bright color uh, yeah seriously that is like the best question holly she says p.s who makes these things up umbrella day really i know i know and i got all excited last year and then i up and missed umbrella day so i was, looked at my calendar and I want to say I saw it today. I was like, oh, it's umbrella day. Oh, my gosh. Maybe it was yesterday. And you know what? Even if I'm a day off, it's cool, right? You'll forgive me if I'm a day off. I don't even know. Okay. Let's go ahead and give this a quick dry. That way you're not trying to paint over wet paint. Because, again, that just never goes well. So my focus, I think, is first going to be getting some base color on the umbrellas. And then we'll come in and create a background. And this is a fun one because you know what? I've got all these colors that we can put in here, but if you don't want to do all the colors, you can totally tone it down. You can, you know, make it your own. If you want to make it a Valentine's umbrella, you can, you know, make them all pink and do some hearts on it. And oh my gosh, maybe we need to do that. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do rainbows. But now I suddenly think Valentine's would be super fun because it is, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, and Holly says, yesterday I got something about National Cheesecake and Brownie Day. <laughs> like, I mean, who, ma yeah, who makes this stuff up? I don't even know. Okay, so now I'm really on the fence. What do you think? Because, again, don't think about the orange. Think about the designs here. Let's do a red umbrella. You no, know what? We're going to do a rainbow umbrella because, yeah, I want to do a rainbow umbrella. So let's grab some true red. Why not? I think I'm just going to kind of grab whatever random colors I happen to have on hand. If I don't have the right colors, then we'll figure out how to make them or get close. And I think I've got enough sitting around to mix. But I think if you kind of come up with roughly roughly um, the rainbow, you're good. Now, of course, we always have white because I end up needing to mix that in to kind of get deeper coverage. And I'm going to go big. So it's not the full size inch, but it's, I think it's our five eighths. So just for fun, I'm going to grab a little bit of white on that brush with a little bit of red. This is my, I'm making my own primer here. Making it kind of light. I think I'll do just kind of a base coverage here. And the beauty of this, it's sort of like when we toned our canvas the other day with some red. If you leave a little bit of space in between uh, each of the sections, you can totally get away with that. Although I guess in some places we got to kind of get covered, cover the, the permanent marker lines. So again, that's, it's a very pale, mushy color right now. It's not super exciting. 
but that's okay. We're just trying to get base coverage, of course. So again, make sure you text me 571-416-7102. If you'd like to get notifications about when I go live, or if you just want me to text you the link to download the tracer. We're just trying this out. So if I'm not amazing with text messages yet, bear with me. I'm always trying new things. So what you're probably seeing is, well, wow, I can barely see that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And it's okay. But it's now not going to be exactly orange underneath. We want a little bit of opacity. And maybe we'll just make all the, all the umbrellas the same. I think that'll make things in general kind of easier for us. What do you think? I think that'll make things easier if we kind of stick to similar. So we've made that outer portion, that kind of very light red. You can't even see it on this one, but I promise you it's there. And we'll give it a quick blast. And since I'm in the red zone, we're just going to keep working with that, right? So off, yeah, just a little blast. I'm going to offload my brush on just a piece of like scratch paper. Oh, Holly asks, is that a text group where any response goes to everyone? No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. The idea of a text group is that I, it just allows me to kind of reach out to you. And if you have questions, you can come back to me, um, but it should not be going to the whole group. However, we can definitely test that out if you, if you want with a small, with a small beta crew. Um, but yeah, the idea is I really want to protect your privacy and it's really just to broadcast to ensure that if you really want to know that I'm going live, that you, you get the news. Okay, so this is getting pretty close to dry or dry enough. I'm just going to now grab into that that red. And so we're going to make a rule, right? Because I, I don't have a reference photo here. The, sun, the light is coming from here. And so if this is tilted, then the, the slightly darker colors are going to happen kind of right along this edge. So I'm literally just taking that true red. Tomato red is fine. And I'm just kind of adding a little bit more red back in. I'm almost being clumsy with it, just kind of slapping it in there, right? A little bit more depth kind of along the rim there. And so we're thinking of it like when the light comes down, it's really going to be heading, sitting, hitting here in these places. And Cassie says, text sent. You've been watching, not commenting much, not painting much. Oh, no, you've been sick for a while. Oh gosh, Cassie, I'm so sorry to hear that. That really, that really bites. I hope you're going to start, you're starting to feel better. Yeah, I say I hadn't, I hadn't seen much from you recently. I was like, oh, are they okay? You know, if some of you guys who get really active, like uh, Patricia, we hadn't heard from her for a little while. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm worried about her. Three weeks. Yeah, that's, that's like forever. That probably feels like forever. All right, so getting a little bit more of that red in there. Okay, so now you can see it already kind of looks like we've got some light shining on it, and all I've done is slap two colors on. So now let's add some, sh some. let's do a red counterpane right here directly opposite it. I don't think I'll be doing counterpanes of those, or of all the colors, but I think the red will be fun to do a counterpane. So I grabbed a little bit of dioxazine purple or dark violet, whatever you want to call it. You know, we're just kind of roughly in that family. And so I've got orange over here. So I'm going to just kind of take that purple right here, add some red to it. And now I've created kind of a, a deeper tone. Wow. That's not that much deeper. Come on. Let's get it there. Okay. Now it's a deeper tone. And I think we can kind of plop that in here. Just going to go directly over the over the handle there because I can just get that in. That's a finishing touch, and we'll know it's there. So again, getting your base your base deep stuff in here, kind of shadowy. Right now, it really just does look like purple, and that might be some of the the whites that are mixing in. And of course, I, I'm using a lot of purple. Oops, maybe too much purple. So my goal is to keep this a fairly quick painting. We'll see how we do. Sometimes I get all carried away. You guys know that. We, we, we just get a little extra 
or sometimes get lost in the details. So I'm trying to trying to keep us a little bit higher level today and see if we can do it, do almost like a quick paint sketch with this. Um, and still give it that kind of cool feel of, of like a painterly feel, I guess. All right, so that looks pretty, pretty, pretty purpley in fact. I'm gonna add a little bit more purple just for giggles right at the base. And I may need to break out the dryer. Yeah, I gotta break out the dryer. I'm just moving paint around at this point. So blasting it, blasting it. So I do love this whole new texting app, at least I think I do. I'm still kind of getting to know it, but it gives me the opportunity, especially if you text and tell me your name, um, then, you know, or if you ask me a question, I can, in fact, just like respond right back directly to you. Um, and it allows me to kind of see what everybody's, what everybody's asking, what they're interested in. Okay. So just added a smidge more purple. In, in that background area. Notice we're just kind of blocking it in. I'm gonna come in and grab some more red right on top of that purple and I'm just gonna add a little bit of red. So if the, if we almost created like a little purple L down here, I'm kind of creating the rest of it covering back over with a little bit more of the red, just to ensure that that feels like red instead of feeling like purple. And now it's gotten nice and dark. a little bit more down. Okay. I got too stripey right there. So I'm just going to blend a little, blend a little. Okie dokie. So now that looks like red, even though it's got purple. How weird is that? But I love it. Go ahead and offload your brush. Just getting the excess off. Like I see, I've just got a ton of paint here. So I'm just kind of smushing as much off as possible. My paint water is going to be super, super gross today by the end of the day. Cassie says, I saw a video today where the lady used deco art traditions paint higher oh you know i feel like i saw a link or something or an ad about that recently but i don't know that i ever i haven't seen like the the traditions paints in the store um i mostly just see you know because again michael's is the closest thing to me and hobby lobby but i usually i'm now aiming for golden if i want the artist quality i like the artist loft and then of course oh here's my baby um but you know, I think maybe maybe as I'm able this year, I'll see if I can't grab some various brands of stuff and test them out. You know, I'm always looking for like the very best pinks and magentas and, you know, colors that just absolutely fly off the canvas. All right. So just doing the quick blast on a lot of these to keep things moving along, keep us from, yeah, keep us from waiting on paint to dry the whole time. So grabbing some of our traditional daffodil yellow Y'all know this color like nobody's business. We always use daffodil yellow. It's the favorite. So grabbing some white and we're going to do that primer just like we did before. Although you notice, look at this. This is where we did the primer and we just let it actually fly. So adding a little extra white so I can get a nice bright white spot there. I'll light yellow. And that is so intense. And I think we'll do this guy here. We'll do him yellow. Again, just kind of. Filling that in. Looks a little weird, but that's okay. We need to, we need to create a kind of a base. Now I'm going to alternate these so that we in fact get kind of like this yellow zigzag up the, right up the middle. Cause why not? Right. Yep. Yeah, you know, Cassie, I wonder, like, how, like, I, I would love, you know, it would be cool to check out the deco art tradition stuff. Um, I'm very curious, you know, how they stack up and if they, if their pigments are a little better, you know, like more intense, more, more concentrated. I would, because I feel like that's kind of like the main differentiator between all the different types of paints is how much pigment you have in them. And in many ways, you kind of get what you pay for, right? So if you're buying a 99 cent bottle or a 75 cent bottle, 
you're not going to get as much coverage and intensity because like the um, sort of the medium or the fluid or the goop, you know, that the pigment is suspended in because the pigment's the actual color. Think of it as like a powder. Um, you know, the pigment to goop ratio, so to speak, is going to be much higher in like the Goldens and uh, the Liquitex Professional and even the Liquitex Basics. So this guy definitely needs a second coat here just to kind of get rid of the transparency. Now, some colors are naturally transparent, no matter how much pigment you throw in there. Um, but the color, but the color will, will be very, very intense and beautiful. Like quinacridone is historically, or what am I trying to say? Notorious. There you go. It is notorious for being, for being, um, whatchamacallit, a little bit see-through. Ooh, that looks really good on camera. Holy moly. Hey, do we want to have a corresponding yellow one here? I feel like we're going to, yeah, let's do that. We're going to basically turn this into like, I don't know, Rasta umbrella. Because I think we're going to have red, green, maybe blue. So I'm going to pull a little bit more of the yellow in and deepen that a little. Because again, this is going to go even darker. So we're just going to block that in. In fact, I'm just grabbing pure yellow here. So I'm kind of grabbing the opposite section right there. I'm thinking that's the opposite pane. These ones, I was a little sketchy in my sketching, so. Uh, i just dab some yellow there. Okay, quick blast. Oh, don't forget my mermaid tail teal. You know, deco art totally was winning when they came up with mermaid tail teal. That is just a stunner. I don't know what else or how else to say it, but mermaid tail teal is a stunner. And it's one of the more intense pigments that mixes beautifully. And, you know, every once in a while, you know, it's, that's why I'm, I always use these in like all of our projects, the daffodil yellow, like the mermaid tail teal, quinacridone magenta. I feel like I can make magic with these. Okay, so I'm going to intensify the yellow on this guy here, kind of, you know, yeah, up a little along there, and then along the seam, this guy kind of along the seam. So I'm leaving a little highlight kind of here, a little highlight here. I'm not worried about, you are in my way, bottle of yellow. I'm not going to worry about the under portion yet. We'll come back to that along the seam here and the beauty of kind of alternating these and having the light source come down this way is you don't have to think too much about where your shadows are and you can kind of take the same concept and just repeat it from element to element it's a nice kind of almost shortcut you know what i mean get a little bit more yellow kind of in the upper portion of each of these undersides yellow takes a million a million a million a million coats so I think it's a little bit hard for you guys to see that. Mm. But there is lightness there. So just for fun, I'm going to offload really quick. And I'm going to go grab just almost straight white. Well, right where I smeared the yellow into the white, I'm just going to grab that. So it's going to turn into a very pale white. And I'm going to kind of just come along here and drag. Whoops. Let's, let's dry it a little. That was way too wet. I just ended up smearing a bright yellow everywhere, which isn't what I wanted. Okay, so now we'll come back in and grab some, some of that white, and we'll just kind of get a little bit of the white kind of along that edge there and pull some in so that you can start to see the highlight a little bit better. A little bit along here. And because yellow is such a bright color, it's very, very hard to... There. So now you've got kind of a highlight. It's still blending in with the with the yellow so that white doesn't actually look completely white. I'm going to offload that paint. I'm going to give it a light rinse just because I want the lightning pigment to go away. Dry it off. Now let's mix a deeper tone yellow to go down here. So we could go with a purple. I worry that's going to get muddy. Let's do it anyway. And if we don't like it, we can 
we can keep going. So I'm going to grab some purple and create sort of a, a poop color, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to kind of take that just along the edge here, just kind of create a little, little something. It still looks like yellow, doesn't it? Isn't that weird? So you want a little bit of the brighter yellow to kind of leave it behind up there because that's where the sun, the sun is shining through as you're looking underneath. But down at the base, we do feel like there's a little bit more shadow happening. It's not, I don't know, I love it when suddenly you add a shadow and you're like, oh, look at that. And we're using purple as our shading element here. Okay, offload. We'll give those a break for now. And green. So depending on how you feel, if you want to do mermaid tail teal and mix your own green, we would mix that with a yellow. Or you can use a straight out of the bottle yellow or green like festive green. Y'all know I love to mix, so we're going to mix. I'm going to mix. You do not have to mix. So a little, little squeeze the mermaid tail teal here. And I think we do want to create a green. Let's see. So the green is going to be this guy here and this guy here, right? So it's we're going to go opposite. And then we'll just kind of hide some little blues in there too. But it's mostly going to be, you know, it's 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 Rustabrella. All right. So I'm going to mix right on top of our mushy yellow because nobody's nobody going to know. So mostly yellow, a little bit of the, the teal. And let's just mix and see what we got. That's pretty. That came out a nice color. I think I want to go a little darker. And then we'll probably peel some of that out to create a lighter yellow and or a lighter green. And so for the lighter green, we may just use the yellow to kind of lighten it out. Oh, Holly, did I, I like had half a sentence and forgot what I was saying. What was the rest of the sentence about yellow is so bright. It's hard to, oh, um, Yellow is so bright. Um, it's hard to make dark and it's hard to make light, you know? Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. All right, so I've got a little green there. And I think I'm gonna use some of that green kind of way up in here, kind of in the just the corner. And all these greens are kind of on the tilt down side. So they'll be a little bit more in shade. Again, we're just blocking in the, oh, the base colors here. You know, it's funny. I did this sketch like without color, just the idea, like blocked it out almost a year ago when I was so excited. I really wanted to do this and I just kind of up and didn't. So. I was so happy to like see the whole, hey, it's umbrella day. I was like, yay, I can break it out and try it now. Redemption day. All right. So let's, since we're here and we've got some dark colors, I'm just going to grab that, the, more of that dioxazine, put some more back in our purple, our purple, purple, purple flat right there. I'm going to just mix some, some of that right in here to create a deeper kind of smushier green. And because the purple has a little bit of red in it, it's just going to play everything down. So if that's our main green, here's our shaded green. And that was just by adding the purple in. So we can kind of come in here and we just create a nice line and then kind of drag it up kind of into that, that guy right there. Create your line there. So my goal here is to be a little bit efficient with our strokes, figure out how to block in color as quickly as possible without, um, I'll make a little bit more of that, without having to overwork the, the paint and the strokes. And that is hard, right? So if you're like, oh my gosh, how does she do that? It does take practice. And I'm trying to model that behavior so you can also start practicing it a little bit. And so it may also be that, you know, these smaller umbrellas really just kind of look color blocked in. Isn't that weird? How like, again, those colors. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit more purple, work it in to create a little bit darker. And I wanna just bring some of that 
down here at the edge. I feel like this one needs a a three color three color shading. And my phone is going crazy. Why? Why is my phone going crazy? Maybe it's everybody texting me. <laughs> so as a reminder, if you're just joining and you'd like to get the tracer for this, um, just, uh, you know, something cute like that, just text me, umbrella or tracer or whatever makes sense to you that you think I would actually know what you mean. Um, and I will make sure you get the link after we're done with this class. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit more of the, the dark. Ooh, that was too dark. rat a tat tat just wipe that off with my finger. Offload. You know, I'll just leave that green and we'll leave that slight. No, let's see. Now that I've offloaded, I can kind of almost dry brush what's left on my brush kind of down there in that corner. It's very, very little, but it might be a little tone. Okay. So now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to rinse because I've got that purple in there. We don't want that purple in there. We've still got a little bit of the green on my palette. Um, I grab some yellow and smush it into this right here. Actually, we'll take this green and just bring it over here into the yellow to create a really light, bright, happy, happy green. And we'll kind of put the highlights kind of in this zone here, just right along the top. Not much more than that because it's kind of on the downside. All right. So Holly asks, when I said that dulling it down with purple and also deepening it and making it darker, because it has red in it, that's because the green already has the blues and the yellows. Yep, that is exactly right. That is exactly right. I mean, the purple also has the also has the blues in it, um, but because we're now using all three of the traditional primary colors, um, we've basically created um, we, we we neutralize things. That's what happens when you add just a pinch of that light green under here when you add. Um, all three of the primaries is you, you start to get neutral tones. Okay. I'm just adding a little kiss of that light green underneath. Sarah Elaine says, love that green on the orange background. Thank you. So I'm not expecting to keep the orange background. Um, that's just really us toning the canvas, but it does look kind of, kind of exciting, doesn't it? And Gloria says, these are pretty. Thank you. All right. Offloading the green from the brush. Again, we've really just sort of blocked that color in, but that's kind of the goal of today is to see if we can create a fairly quick painting. This one has a lot of detail for a half hour, so I know we'll be, I know already we'll be running a bit longer than a half hour, but um, still gonna try and keep it quick. I think it's coming together pretty fast. I want like a cobalt blue ultramarine. I can't find mine, so um, excuse me while I go high end. Oh, wait, never mind. I don't have to go high end. I can just grab the ultramarine. This is another one of my, my staples. So if you do a lot of my projects, um, you know, it's often the same cast of characters. And I usually select these colors because they're so stinking versatile. Like it's kind of amazing Ugh, what you can do with them. So every so often when I start running out of my favorite colors, it's like an opportunity to freak out. So most of these blues now that I want to add in, this brush is a little big for this work. I think we should all step down a size or two. Just gonna grab kind of a round brush and just throw a little bit of blue in there. And that is straight out of the bottle blue. And I can get away with that because the, da the daffodil, no, the ultramer, the, this one, this brand, this color, Folk Art Ultramarine <laughs> is, um, it's a very intense, thick, gooey color and it cooperates like crazy. So I'm just kind of placing that blue in there. We never see the front side of the blue. So we can just assume that whatever kind of beautiful deep color goes on is probably good enough. Now, if you look at it and you feel like there's a little bit of a clash or it's not quite right, and I'll look at it again too once we get once we get that blue kind of laid in there, then we'll, um, we can make a decision if we wanna add some, some highlights or some lowlights. So uh, if you're just joining us, 
Cassie asked, is this lunch and paint? Yeah, it's kind of more like dinner and paint, huh? I ended up, so I, many of you know, I'm working, I'm in the final semester of my, my master's program and I'm getting an MBA and uh, we're doing our final, we're doing our final thesis and I had to run into the office today and we're trying to do something that actually helps it work. Um, I had to go in and do a data poll because my guys are like, hey, we need this stuff so we can, you know, crunch the numbers over the weekend and all that. So I was like, crap, I thought I could get back in time and it didn't work. And we have no cells on there, which is awesome or not awesome. So I'm going to take this same blue and I'm just going to kind of go right here. This is a base coat, right? It's just a base coat. But I feel like I want to make sure I can see where those handles are. So popping it with some blue. It's going to help me visually. It's going to help me mentally. Sometimes I think I do half of what I do. All right, that was too thick, but we'll fix it. Sometimes I feel like I just have to do things for myself mentally when I'm painting, just so I'm like, okay, I feel better. All right, so the blue in the background here is a little bit, it's a little, it's a little much. So I'm going to just grab a touch of the purple and just kind of along the base edges here, just bring a little bit of purple right along the sort of the umbrella, the edge line. I don't know that we, we need to neutralize it with another color. I'm, of course, whenever possible, avoiding black. I really don't like using black unless I'm, you know, trying to get a cute outline or something. But just to darken a color, black is my, black's a pet peeve, but you guys knew that. Okay. Yeah, I like that purple. That kind of brings it around a little bit. And actually that blue, even on these, oh, let me see if I can get this guy. The blue kind of works pretty well for the umbrella parts too. Boop. Yeah, I think we're just going to go with that. All right, so let's offload this guy here. I'm going to rinse him. Blast it. I'm going to come in with a background, and then we'll make any final tweaks to this and get final details. But I think blocking in the background is... It's going to be kind of fun and cathartic, so let's do that. So we have some options. We could do like um, kind of a realistic sky color if you wanted, or kind of a cloudy sky color, which, or, yeah, in fact, let's do that. So it's going to be very, very neutral. I'm going to grab a second one of these. I think I'm going to just grab the paint off of this guy, but I want to, I'm going to mix a range of, a range of colors. So we definitely going to need a good chunk of white. So Cassie, I think I answered you and said, yes, this is lunch and paint, but I think I also went off on a whole tangent about a million other things too. So I'm sorry. I got a little, a little sidetracked there. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to the palette. Okay. So to create the sky color, I think we want to get kind of a neutral purpley gray up here and then maybe have it get lighter as it comes down and we can add a little bit of color in between. So a little kiss of yellow. I'm going to start over. Oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. Start over here. Big hunk of white. I'm going to come in and grab a little bit of that cobalt or Ultramarine. I keep calling it cobalt. So that's a bit greenish. So whenever you're mixing, it's always good to kind of start small. I feel like I kind of went a little over extra there. I'm going to add a little bit of that violet purple to it to kind of neutralize it. Isn't that crazy? That purple just neutralizes it a lot. So now we've kind of created like a grayish tone. I think I almost want a little bit more purple in there. And again, you can kind of, you can really play with this. It's very meh, but I think it's going to work. So a little bit more white, kind of right in there. Maybe a little bit more purple right in here, just so we can kind of see what our options are. Can you see that those, those three different tones that we've just created? So it's kind of, um, so we have that sort of the most neutral, a lighter version, and then a purpley version. So I'm going to start with kind of what, what I last mixed was this purplish one and just kind of start to kind of get some of that in here, blocking it in. And I'm not going to go directly up to the edges. I'm going to get real close. 
And if you feel like you need to give your, your figures a lot of space and then come in and fine tune, that's perfectly okay. Now, because I also did a lot of mixing, I've got a range of color on this, this brush. And so that's kind of fun. So grab a little bit more of that purple up in here. And again, it's very neutral. We might add some clouds in, we'll see. Again, I'm trying to keep this sort of short and sweet and dinner and paint, I guess. I got a special dispensation from the kids. I'm like, you guys hungry or can I go live? And they're like, I'm not hungry, go away, mom. I'm like, okay, works for me. Gotta love me some teens, right? This brush is starting to fall apart. So if you have a brush and you start to see stray bristles, do yourself a favor, even though you end up like pulling that whole bristle out, which kind of sucks. Um, you know, you can't make a pretty line with it. So you might as well just let that bristle go. So I'm still kind of grabbing out of that most purplish, purple gray tone. And then I'm going to grab, I show want more purple. I'm going to grab more purple and just kind of mix it in here. Adding a little bit more purple up at the top. Just kind of moving around. So roughly outlining. And in some ways, we're kind of letting that orange sienna color provide a little outline for us. Oops. Right onto my figure. That's where a baby wipe would help. Or, you know, spit in a finger or paper towel, whatever you got. Grabbing some of the lighter tone in here just so that we get a little, little mishmash. So I really wanted to do like all, all blue skies. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. We don't use umbrellas when we have blue skies. So Isn't that like a crazy color? Like you can actually see all the different color ranges happening in there. It's very subtle, but your brain still kind of picks it up. All right, so I'm going to mix some more. I've got a lot of blue in there, so I need to kiss it with some yellow to kind of neutralize it to a green. A little bit of purple. A little bit more purple. That's too much. So if you grab too much paint, on your brush, you can always set it off to the side and come back for it. Oh, Cassie, oh, that's a really good point. She, so you do have the whole um, umbrellas out, you know, even when it's sunny because the sun is so strong. That makes perfect sense. All right, that got really neutral. So I'm gonna, pur let's purple it up. Okay, so now we're more purple. I think we actually had a sunny bluebird kind of day today, but we definitely at this time of year tend to get a lot of just sort of gray overcast. And so I always have a lot of empathy for anybody who ends up, you know, having like the seasonal disorder stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh, I so get it. Like it can be really, really rough with no sun. So I'm missing some spots in here. It's a little bit on purpose. And that's just mostly because I'm trying to get the quick coverage first. And then we can come back in and tune. It's also because I know myself and I get like really fixated on a thing and we'll mess with it to the point of like too far. And so if I just kind of say, all right, I'm going to come back to that. then it allows me to kind of move on and move along. So we've got a lot of range going on in here because I keep kind of just grabbing from round Robin from this weird mix. And I'm not, you know, doing solid mixing. You can see there's a ton of color on my brush. Those little bits of blues and yellows that are kind of popping in and oops, yellow paint booger right there. Um, it it reminds me of like some of the really insane storms, uh, snow, or not snowstorms, but rainstorms that we get here from time to time. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the sky turn green, but I've seen the sky turn green. One time I caught a photo of it and it was like, Half the sky was like a sort of a, a gray purpley blue and the other half was green. And it was just like this storm front coming in like, like a freight train. I was sort of like, this isn't a tornado weather, is it? I sure hope not. 
And so I love that it's not all one color because it gives that background a little bit of life. Because in the real world, nothing is ever a solid color, right? Which is why as weird as it was that we created that pale red primer, it we actually didn't cover over at all because some of it makes perfect sense to be that color. All right, let's see if I can come in around these guys a little bit better. Oh, in this section here. So Sarah Elaine says, I'm so entertained watching you paint and art and the art lessons you share while talking. I'm all ears. It's crazy going from orange and watching it change to gray. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Like, I mean, I love me some orange, but it's, and it's weird. I love these neutral colors because they really do the thing. And so it's also a lot about lights and darks. And I think it would feel weird if we had done the background first, because I probably would have chosen much more subdued colors. But, you know, I wanted to go with the standard kind of rainbow, everyday rainbow umbrella. And so by getting those colors in first and having them kind of have to compete with that orange, we had to make them pop on the orange, which then makes them extra pop, you know, once we get the, um, once we get the gray background in. So much of what we do is about tricking Tricking the eye, tricking the brain. Well, it's really about tricking the, the brain. The eye sees what it sees, but the brain is a, is a real crazy person when it comes to interpreting things. All right, so that's already pretty fun. I feel like we have two ways we could go. Um, we could tune, we could go with a smaller brush and get in all these sort of little in interstitial bits of of orange that I didn't quite cover up or we can leave them. And right now I'm really leaning towards leaving them. So up here, this little guy, he is an amorphous blob. I mean, he's not exciting, but as we kind of zoom out and look at it, it oddly, it works. So I think I would like to amp a little bit of the highlights. So I'm going to offload my brush, but I'm not going to rinse it. I think some of those neutral tones will be good. I'm going to grab a little bit of white in here and just kind of create a lighter, a lighter gray. And Holly says, that's definitely the way an artist looks at this guy. <laughs> but you know, I had to really train myself. All right, pray for me, guys. I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a little highlight right in there. The little one just kind of right here. Not too much, just a little kiss. Because we do want it to kind of look like it's catching the light. A little bit more. I'm gonna dry brush. So I'm kind of going really light here so that you can actually see my brush strokes. I don't know if it shows on camera or not, but in for realsy life, you can see my brush strokes. And I'm also giving, creating a little bit of space, like right in here in that crease where it's likely to be darker because we still wanna make, you know, because it kind of curves in a little bit at least in this picture. So it would be darker there. Maybe a little, little kiss on a ledge here. I don't know. Maybe a small highlight on the green, just right at the very tip top. Just a touch. You can tell I'm not being overly accurate. I'm just having fun. Pull a little bit more down on this guy. A little bit more, just a kid, just a smidge. All right, look at that. We just did some umbrellas. How crazy was that? Um, you know what? I was about to wrap it up, but I want to do just kind of a little bit of just a little light kind of line. It's not a full line, but it's just kind of something that places a little emphasis on some of these edges, more so on the, the outside ones. I don't know. I want something here. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to do a little edging, a little bit. Oh, and you know what else we need, guys? Guys, guys, guys. We need a little something just kind of 
just a little highlight kind of on that, um, that thing there. So just kind of creating like a line, not much, just a little kind of smudge. I knew I was a detail I was going to forget. A little highlight there. Just kind of gives it a smidge of dimension. So I also feel like, you know, a lot of what we did here today was just shy of just kind of gestural. You sort of know it's there. All right, that was fun. Okay, I'm pretty happy. I think I think I'm I could overwork this more, but I'm gonna call it a day. So I hope you had fun with this. And again, if you would like to get the tracer, um, and you know, inner insider guys or inner circle folks, you already I've already uploaded the tracer for you. But if you're not in the inner circle, which is our premium membership, just text me and I will get you the link to the downloadable tracer if you want to try this. And if you you know let me know, you'd also like kind of a reminder link for where the live is. Um, I can send you that or I can get you the YouTube link. Well, let me know. Thank you guys for joining me. This was fun. My voice is now officially gone. I love you and we'll see you soon. Bye.